So we're going to talk a little bit about tinctured drinks. Tinctured drinks are probably the most interesting. If you go to a Brits competition, this is the thing that you'll be interested in. It's the most uh, visual part of the whole show because you can't really look at someone's espresso brew and go, that, that, that was delicious. You, know, you, can't, <laughs> uh, you can't see that much, but the tinctured drinks uh, are always interesting. Everyone wants to see, when baristas ask, you know, how did it go, what was your signature drink, it's usually the second question. Um, and I always like the idea of the word signature being something that was, you know, something of me in the drink, something of what I was passionate about or interested in. This drink um, that I took to Tokyo was actually the first kind of signature drink I came up with, but I refined it down um, for this competition. And the way I came up with it was that I I sent an email out to a bunch of friends, a bunch of people, and said, look, we all drink coffee because sometimes we need coffee. Yeah? <laughs> we need some coffee. But equally, I hope there's times when we go and have a cup of coffee because we like how coffee tastes. We want to spend some time sitting down drinking a cup of coffee. And I said, if you do drink coffee like this, what do you like to drink with it? Um, and I got the responses back. And just out of curiosity, what would, what would your responses be, if you're honest? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah. Raspberries. Raspberries? Chocolate raspberry sauce, yeah. That's my favorite. With espresso? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you won't be the CIA, but um, anything else? Let's go. Yeah. Um, the four. What? Biscotti. The kind of four answers I got back mostly were chocolate, number one. Uh, number two, biscotti. Three, cream. For tobacco. Um, I have honest friends, so no, yeah, you know, sorry, it goes really, really well. Um, I did uh, a lecture at the Colony Institute of America last week, uh, kind of lecture theatre thing, and we did the same question to the audience, and one of the faculty was there, bow tie, tweet, and um, gently raised his hand, I'm like, yes sir, what, what about you? Said, My grandmother would put chunks of cheddar cheese in her coffee. <laughs> drink it now and spread the melted cheese on bread. <laughs> and there was just a very hushed <laughs> moment in the room and then it just, yeah. But I've yet to have that answer beaten. Um, so those were the four ingredients that I, um, <coughs> not cheese, uh, that I set around to work with. And then there's, there's kind of various different challenges and one of the big challenges was tobacco itself. Do we have examples? Um, this is the, the very same tobacco that I used in Tokyo and I went out and I hunted and I put my nose in a lot of jars and totally have a smell and if it smells of something pass it around call out what it smells of apart from tobacco does uh, it smell of anything at all? vanilla berries Spread them back. Mm -hmm. Can I get to the thing? Yeah, sure. Set them up. My dancers have been pleasantly consistent across this trip when I get these mm -hmm. nice. So, vanilla, cherries with that. Anything else? Cedar. Sorry? Cedar. 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 <laughs> Go on, Cedar. shout it out. Oh, oh. Well, I got kind of prunes, that kind of dried fruit thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people say raisins. Yeah. yeah. You get that as well? So, this is kind of exciting to finally stick my nose into it. Her grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this was a kind of light bulb moment. When I hit this tobacco, I was like, that's all of the flavors I can smell. I probably at some point had in coffee. They're all really enticing flavors, and I think they're flavors that I can marry kind of really, really well. The problem is that it smells lovely if you put it in your mouth and chew it. Less of an exciting experience. So <laughs> the challenge was to find a way to get tobacco into the drink, um, and I just kind of watched to see what other people were doing. And the best way it seemed was to infuse it um, <coughs> into half and half, or into just plain cream. Um, are you on? So, um, we'll start it off now as we go. I have a, 
come and play a tiny little talk <laughs> 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 Do we have a <laughs> 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 So if I was doing the, you know, you can look this up on the website later, it would be about, you do answers, don't you? Three answers. <laughs> half and half. Um, and then, I only know grams for this, about three and a half grams of tobacco. And it was a, a really difficult ingredient to work with. Because a little bit too much, and you get way too much in the end drink, but not enough, and it's just for us. Like that. So, um, that should just, I hope, sit. Uh, <coughs> and what's kind of nice is that it takes on not only the flavour, but a little bit of colour from the tobacco. Uh, and you get not just those kind of florals of fruits, vanilla, but what I wanted that it, it does give is a little bit of sensation, physical taste sensation. Mm -hmm. so the kind of tingle, it's not quite a chilly heat, but those that drink this will experience something in the throat that comes from the tobacco itself. Kind of fun. The other uh, ingredient for, that I wanted to replicate was biscotti. And biscotti as a finished product isn't great to work with. You can try and infuse it into water and you just get biscotti porridge. That's <laughs> <laughs> really delicious. Um, so what I did for that was try and build it from the ground up. So. Um, some fine local water from the tap. Uh, and into that, just used the key ingredients. And I went out and I looked at loads and loads of different things, loads of different recipes for this kind of or I and looked for interesting ingredients. And obviously, uh, things like almonds, and toasted almonds is quite important. And uh, toasted hazelnuts cropped up all the time. But the other thing that kept appearing was, um, was rosemary, popped up quite a few times. And um, as I said, I was lucky enough to have a relationship with a friend of mine who worked at a fatback restaurant. And I walked in one day to their little food lab and they had about a dozen bottles on the side of um, Everclear, um, not for drinking, but inside each one they had almost some stuff was an ingredient. And in one was roasted peanut, in one was like a whole branch of rosemary, and another one was chopped rosemary. And what they were doing is taking a little pipette and you put your head back and they drop a drop of liquid under your tongue and because alcohol is really good at dissolving flavour and equally it evaporates very, very quickly, you've got a really intense kind of burst of flavour in your mouth, whatever it was that they put in there. And the thing that blew my mind was how <coughs> different roast, uh, whole rosemary leaves smelled and tasted compared to chopped rosemary. Just grab a leaf from here, smell the leaf whole, and it's quite soft, small, fragrant, quite gentle. Tear it, smell it again. And that floor, that soft aroma becomes quite harsh, piney, resinous, eucalyptal almost. And this was a really important moment for me to understand and pay attention to every ingredient that you work with and that how it changes. <coughs> are we getting the smell difference? Those yeah. are trying? It's just totally different. Yeah. Um, so this recipe does call for a whole rosemary leaf. So about a dozen go in there. Um, a little bit of sugar, not always a bad thing. So just here's a simple syrup. Uh, you can use the onion lap for painting on syrup or something like that. Not too much. And then um, this will trace places with the tobacco in here and just sit in the um, So to kind of keep the drink marrying together, to kind of get flavours to work well and marry up nicely, um, I'm using chocolate. Now, in the way that the competitions are judged, there's a box worth six points for a drink under the title Creativity Signature. So it's kind of an open ended thing. And for a lot of roasters, we tend to take it to mean how weird and wacky an ingredient is. <laughs> <laughs> like crowbar into my coffee drink. Um, you know, the idea of kangaroo meat doesn't really appeal to me with a coffee drink. And there's no denying that chocolate and coffee have a really, really nice flavour marriage. They work really, really well together. So what I always thought creativity meant was is was not finding and using ingredients, but finding ways to be creative with them. Because there's a really good reason chocolate and coffee taste good. There's good old-fashioned chemistry behind a really good marriage of flavour. Um, I went out and ate lots of chocolate, which is not a terrible hardship. <laughs> and um, 
the really, really nice ones, like the Valronas, they had a, an incredible fruit, a kind of complex fruit of people, that in the final drink just pushed everything way into the acidic tap. It wasn't fun. And at the end, the best chocolate I found was um, just like a, a regular store-bought uh, 60% uh, bar. It wasn't that interesting, but had enough of those common flavours to marry the drink up without kind of taking control of it. So, um, what we did was put some 40 grams of chocolate in there and then just strain the tobacco over it. So this kind of now, um, I not say spicy, but uh, well infused cream will just start to melt the chocolate. And that's a, a kind of really nice drink. Into here, so a nice kind of taste. If you tasted it now, just the cream on its own, way, way, way too much tobacco. But when you have enough chocolate, enough kind of fat, and some other dominant kind of flavors in there, muscling uh, retention, then it becomes quite balanced. And here we have these doubles, yeah? Now, I've already told you the coffee that I use in the competition. And um, there was the Costa Rican coffee from Pump at Urbazoo, and a uh, Kenyan coffee from uh, an estate called Gusambwini, which I'm not going to spend. And, um, the Costa Rican had a nice kind of hazelnut note, it was clean and light, it worked, I thought, really well with the disgusting flavours. But, there was all that fruit in the tobacco that really appealed to me. And there was all that fruit in my Kenyan coffee that really, really appealed to me. So, um, just within the rules of the competition, because you're supposed to serve the same exact drinks for all judges, so you're not supposed to kind of serve two one thing or another. I still decided to use two shots of the Costa Rican and two shots of the Kenyan. Mix them all together in here, and then split it out again. And that worked quite well. Um, do we have the whisk still? Or no. Spoon it. Um, start from the cheaper. And that, in the finished drink, it meant that you could find those copies because they had so much character. But they also worked really well. Yes? The uh, top to back section, yes. where do you get that again? Is it waste with your time? So, what's the second half of the question? Is it waste with your time? No. Uh, this is bought from the Covent Garden Cigar and Snuff Merchants. All the tricks you could give me was it's from Virginia. Uh, <laughs> is that acceptable? So in here now, we should have a bunch of shot glasses. We have them. Yeah. You, you prefer the single origin rather than just blending the Costa Rican Um, yeah, I mean, I was using them for different drinks earlier in the performance. The Costa Rican was just for the espresso and the Kenyan was just for the cashew. <laughs> but, um, you're only allowed two grinders. So, it seems to be a most easy workaround for me. <coughs> so, coming back to our nice, um, uh, biscotti liquid. I wanted to make this into a foam, just so that it would, um, separate, you know, you can have almost a two-stage drink. <coughs> um, and there's lots and lots of different ways to make things foam these days. Some are terrifying, you know, you can add all sorts of worrying compounds. I just went back to milk, and um, what I used was, was whey protein. It's the same thing that makes milk foam when you steam it for a cappuccino. And uh, apparently people who like to, to, you know, do bodybuilding kind of things like to consume a lot of this. That's not me. Uh, but it does a relatively low percentage cause things to foam. And um, the other thing I'm going to use is <coughs> just going like, who's won the black of who's, who's, who's drinking? Oh, that's right. Okay, we need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right, it's right there. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody pick eight random numbers between number? between one and the final number. Okay, we'll do it. Let's do it. I've heard that there's a tradition that a